Seriously? Hey guys, Ulta87 here, and today I'm going to be showing you how to build a Ninja Warrior obstacle course. Uh, I'll also give you guys some blueprints so you have something to follow, uh, but for now, let's go check out the course. Okay, so let's get started building that course. The first thing you wanna do is draw up some blueprints. Uh, here's mine. This will be the top view and this will be the side view. Pretty much it's a frame made up of four by four by 10 foot posts. And then you're gonna to wanna to make a material list. Here's what I used. And you're gonna to wanna to make sure that all the lumber is pressure treated since it's gonna be outside. Next, you're gonna to wanna to find a good spot to put your course. I put mine on the side of the garage because there wasn't a whole lot going on over there. And the first thing you wanna do is dig the holes for your posts. You, you wanna make sure that these are at least two and a half feet deep. Uh, I secured mine with a two by four, held them in place, and then I dug the holes for all eight holes. Keep in mind that two middle ones are gonna be right next to each other. And once you got them all in place and they're nice and level, you're gonna to wanna to start cementing them in two at a time. I put this uh, aluminum strip across just to make sure that they were level. And once the cement is hardened, uh, backfill the post and then you're ready to add your top beams. For these I used one lag bolt per side. The first obstacle I added was a pull-up bar. This will give your structure some extra strength. To put this in you're going to want to drill all the way through one side and most of the way through the other side and then insert your pole in your flange and screw it down. I also added a decorative piece along the top. Once that's done you're ready to start your ultimate cliffhanger. Start cutting your two by twos and then lay them down in the design that you think will work. Once they're all in place and good to go you can start screwing them down. Make sure you pre-drill every hole otherwise the wood will split. And once that's done, you're ready to add it to your structure. To install, run a two by four at the desired height at each side. Lift up one end, lift up the other end, then bolt in place. When pre-drilling your holes for your washers and your lag bolts, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that they're down far enough to where they won't interfere with your top lag bolts. For the pegboard, you're gonna to wanna to drill a bunch of different holes at different heights so you have different options while climbing. You're gonna to wanna to drill all the way through the two by 12s. And since the board isn't quite thick enough to support the weight of the pegs, you're gonna to wanna to either put two by fours or another two by 12 behind this, then screw them in. Make sure you leave a little room on the end so you can attach it to the frame. Then you're gonna to wanna to flip it over and continue drilling the existing holes until they're almost all the way through. I left about a quarter of an inch. After that's installed, you're gonna to wanna to make your pegs. I used two by twos, sawed them down to about six inches and then sanded them down till they fit in the holes. Up next is one of the easiest obstacles to build and it's also my favorite. You just drill some holes through some two by fours, make sure that the hole's big enough for a rope to fit through. Then drill a hole through your one inch PVC pipe and tie knots at the top to make sure that it doesn't slip. And up next is the globe grasp. For this, I just took some fence toppers that I got from Home Depot and screwed them in. And I noticed that they were a little bit slippery at first, so then I put some sealing on them. And up next is the monkey bars, another one of my favorite obstacles. I did this one completely wrong. I drilled through some blocks of wood thinking I could just put some lag bolts down, but they tended to want to pop up. I put a two by four on top and it solved the solution, but for an even better way to do it, I would just do it the same way that you did the pull-up bar by drilling a hole through one side and almost through the other side. This is a cool obstacle because pretty much anyone can do it. You can either jump or if you got linky arms like me, you can swing from bar to bar. And up next is the notorious salmon ladder. This one went in surprisingly easy. I dug my holes for my 4x4x12 four four foot post about two feet deep. And you're going to want to put your post in at a slight angle. This will add some uh, structural integrity. For the actual rungs, I used six inch lag bolts. I put those in at 12 inches apart which is ninja regulations. For the salmon ladder pole, I just used an old fence post that came from right there. It's about five feet, eight inches long. It's hollow, but definitely strong enough to hold any of me and my friends. I also decided to put two lag bolts at the bottom of the structure. That way I could do some uh, reverse pull-ups. I also screwed in some extra pieces of wood that I had laying around. That way I could get down from the salmon ladder once I reached the top. As you can see, I ran some two by fours along the top and along the sides of my salmon ladder. Uh, this is just for extra support. I'm not sure if you really need it. I think it would be okay without it. And once you're done with the salmon ladder, you have to remember to dig a trench. Since your structure is only about seven and a half feet high, you're gonna wanna dig a trench about two and a half feet deep so your feet don't hit the ground when you're doing the obstacles. And you can also add some water to pretend you're at Mount Midoriyama. And now we're on to the back part of the course. These are all some pretty fun obstacles that pretty much anyone can do that test your speed and agility. I'm not going to go over in too much detail since most of it's pretty self-explanatory. 
Uh, all the stuff we had was just stuff that we found lying around in the garage. Like, for instance, this is just a pallet with uh, some pieces of wood and some tools that we had left over from the slip and side kickball. And then up there we had the zip line, the rope to zip line transition. Uh, we bought the rope a while ago. I think we paid like 50 bucks for it. It's about a 50 foot rope. It's pretty hard to climb. And then we'll just take this rough transition. To get up there, we're going to use these steps. We just use some leftover concrete blocks. Put a pole in the ground, wrap some rope on it, just make sure it's nice and secure. Then we move on to the jump steps. It's just a couple five gallon buckets underneath. We got a piece of wood. And for extra security, we put tent pegs in there. And then we're on to the rolling log, which is just a barrel that we found for 10 bucks on Craigslist. And put it on a track of two two by fours with a two by two securing the two at the end. And the rope, we just ran around that around a tree. And then we got this balance beam. It's just a tire on top of a pal on top of another, another tire, and that's all secured together by two by twos and uh, two by fours. And the last obstacle is the balance barrel, which uh, you just slap some two by fours to some two by twos and then place them on top of your barrel. Thanks again for watching my Ninja Warrior tutorial video. I hope you found it useful. Uh, I'd love to hear from you guys in the comments below. Let me know if you think you could tackle my course uh, or if you have any ideas for any new obstacles that I might be able to put in here. And if it's your first time here, uh, we'd love to have you subscribe to our channel. Uh, we build awesome things like this and we do crazy things like the slip and slide kickball video. And if you want to come out and join us or see what we're working on next, you can always find us on social media at Nothing to Do Crew.